My name is Steve DeMossi and welcome to Uncharted DIY. For today's project, I want to show you solutions I came up with to protect the flicker nest in the tree behind me. We had a pair of northern flickers that decided that the apple tree in our backyard would make the perfect nest for them, and we were pretty excited to have them. The idea of being able to observe their behavior and them raising their babies was pretty exciting to us. They built it on a snag in the apple tree that was much lower than it typically would be for a flicker nest. This one was just about six feet high. And the problem with that is it's really vulnerable to predators. So there are a lot of predators that would like to get into flicker nests. Raccoons, snakes, squirrels, possums, and cats, and any other climbing creature and they would love to make a snack out of either the flickers or their babies or both. Then on top of that, we have a lot of squirrels. And as cute as they are, they would like to take over that nest and use it for themselves. The thing is, the population of squirrels isn't decreasing, but northern flickers are. Because of habitat loss and competition with starlings for nesting cavities, flicker populations are down by 49% in the U.S. And I would hate to see the species go away. So the idea of being able to protect a new family of flickers really appealed to us. Since I've already done all the protection to the tree, I'm going to review for you what I did, including the first attempt, version 1.0, which seemed like a great idea, but it didn't really work and the final method, version 2.0, that's up there now, and has been working flawlessly for two seasons and is still going strong. So the first solution, I used Bird Be Gone bird spikes, and I lined the sides of the trunk where the nest is. If above the entrance, I put two rings of spikes, and then below, I added two more rings of spikes. My thinking was that nothing was gonna be able to climb over those spikes or get through them to get to the nest. That seemed like a pretty good idea at the time, but there's a couple problems with that. It doesn't prevent cats from jumping from the ground to the front of the tree that was unprotected where the flickers are going to be. And as it turned out, it was not an obstacle at all for the squirrels. I have a bird cam watching the nest, and I was able to see that a squirrel just stretched right over the bird spikes, went right past them, and into the nest. But what scared us the most was reviewing the footage, and on the night before, a raccoon got past those spikes and reached into the nest while the female flicker was sleeping in the nest. Fortunately, it wasn't able to reach her. However, it did really scare the flicker, and she didn't come back to sleep in that nest again for two weeks. We were concerned she wasn't going to nest there at all. So we had to act, and we had to act fast. The solution for version 2.0 of our nest protection was to clad the tree in metal. I used sheet aluminum in the form of roll flashing from Home Depot. Flashing is used in the corners of roofs and around chimneys, but it's inexpensive and it's really easy to work with, and it's incredibly smooth. And my plan was to clad the tree three quarters of the way around the trunk, so that there was just a thin area in the front where the flickers could get up and down to the nest, but nothing else could get to them. If you've never worked with metal before, don't let that scare you. The metal for this project is really easy to work with, and my whole protection system only took a couple hours to put together. Now, because the protection is already up and has been working for a while, I'm not going to be able to show you the project from start to completion, but I am able to show you the steps that I took. And it's actually pretty simple. The most complicated part is building the cone baffle. The idea behind the cone baffle is that nothing is able to climb up the front of the tree to get to the nest. Then with the cladding around the other three quarters of the tree trunk, nothing should be able to climb on the back of the trunk either. So when I put back up the bird spikes, I doubled the amount and I overlapped them so that there was a lot more spikes. And this time I used screws to attach them to the tree. This really stiffened them up. So now squirrels can't just push their way through and raccoons can't just push them out of the way. So if you have a similar situation and want to put up a feeder, that should work just as well. The supplies I used all came from Home Depot in my case, which was great because I just made one stop. I bought a 20 inch by 25 foot length of roll flashing corrosion resistant deck screws, some metal snips, a rubber mallet, bird be gone and viro spikes, and two different colors of spray paint. 
The shiny aluminum wasn't exactly subtle, and I was concerned that the flickers may be scared of the nest. So by using two different colors of spray paint and making kind of a camouflage pattern, it really blends in well with the tree, and the flickers accepted it right away. With version 2.0 of the nest protection, we haven't had any predators be able to get close enough to the nest to be a threat. Now, if I could just figure out a way to get rid of the starlings, the flickers would have a totally secure home. After the upgrades to the protection, the Flicker parents ended up having five Flicker babies that they successfully raised and fledged from the nest. And they're making all the preparations to do it again this year. You can also check out my other video on how to create a cone baffle. I found some great software that really simplifies the process. And it shows you how easy it is to work with the metal. If you missed the link in this video, make sure to check out my YouTube channel or check out the website at unchartedDIY.com where you'll also find a list of resources and materials. This has been Steve and thanks for watching Uncharted DIY. If you've enjoyed this how-to video, please make sure to like and subscribe and also check out unchartedDIY.com where you'll find further information and more detailed how-to projects.